luxurious villas, Roman towns. The best known is Pompeii. Mount Vesuvius erupted in the year 79 AD, burying the Roman city of Pompeii in ashes. According to the testimony of one eyewitness, darkness descended upon the inhabitants as dust covered the land like a flood. Thousands of people died and for many years no one returned to Pompeii. When explorers arrived in 1748, they found the city intact, preserved by volcanic ash. As a result, Pompeii became a popular study site for archaeologists and experts. There they learn what life must have been like in old times. Pompeii, despite being researched for so long, is still full of hidden treasures, and recently archaeologists found a secret forbidden room that has left them speechless. What was the purpose of this forbidden secret room, and what were the people of Pompeii trying to hide? Join us as we investigate how archaeologists in Pompeii unearthed a forbidden chamber and made a once-in-a-lifetime discovery. Pompeii, located on the west coast of Italy along the shores of the Bay of Naples, south of the modern-day city of Naples, was incorporated into the Hellenistic realm in the 8th century BC by Greek settlers. Pompeii, an independent town, fell under the power of Rome in the 2nd century BC and the Bay of Naples soon became an attraction for wealthy Roman tourists who enjoyed the Campania coastline. By the turn of the 1st century AD, Pompeii, located about 5 miles from Mount Vesuvius, was a thriving resort for the Roman Empire's most prominent citizens. The paved walkways were lined with elegant houses and magnificent villas, many of which were filled with exquisite artworks and brilliant fountains. The rich volcanic soil provided much of the city's wealth. The region was a hub for olives, grapes and other crops, and wine from Pompeii was relished in some of Rome's most famous houses. Tourists, locals and enslaved people crowded into small factories and craftsmen shops, bars, cafes, brothels and bathhouses. People filled the 20,000-seat arena and sat in the open-air squares and marketplaces. Scholars estimate that on the eve of the fatal eruption in 79 AD, there were approximately 12,000 people living in Pompeii and nearly that many in the surrounding territory. Villages in the volcano's vicinity had long learnt to coexist with their violent neighbour. Even when a major earthquake shook the Campania region in 63 AD, a quake that experts now believe was a foreshadowing rumbling of the calamity to come, people continued to flock to the shores of the Bay of Naples and Pompeii became more congested each year. Sixteen years later, in probably August or October of 79 AD, a series of minor earthquakes shook the Pompeii region. According to the historian and eyewitness Pliny the Younger, the locals there dismissed the tremors since they were not particularly alarming because they are common in Campania. Mount Vesuvius erupted again shortly after noon on that fateful day. The explosion launched a plume of ash, rock and scorching hot volcanic gases into the sky, which could be seen for hundreds of kilometres. This debris tower drifted to earth as it cooled, first the fine-grained ash, then the lightweight fragments of pumice and other rocks. The next morning, a pyroclastic flow, a 100 mile per hour burst of superheated gas and pulverised rock, poured down the mountainside, vaporising everything and everyone in its path. Pompeii had been buried in millions of tonnes of volcanic ash by the time the Vesuvius explosion spluttered to a halt on the second day of the eruption. Some people returned to town in search of missing family or belongings, but there was hardly anything left to find. For centuries, Pompeii, Herculaneum and a number of villas in the surrounding area were abandoned. Pompeii remained virtually undisturbed until 1748, when a group of explorers in search of ancient treasures came in the Campania and began digging. They discovered that the ashes had acted as an excellent preservative and Pompeii was practically exactly as it had been over 2,000 years previously. Many experts credit the excavation of Pompeii with influencing the 18th century neoclassical resurgence. The wealthiest and most fashionable households in Europe displayed art and copies of ruins objects, and drawings of Pompeii's buildings helped determine architectural patterns of the time. For example, affluent British families frequently constructed Etruscan rooms that resembled those found in Pompeian villas. Many of the conserved artworks, paintings and other items 
are now on display at the Pompeii Antiquarium, which is situated among the city's ruins. The excavation of Pompeii has been ongoing for nearly three centuries and the entire site has been designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Scholars and visitors are still as enthralled as they were in the 18th century by the city's haunting remains, as well as the artefacts and bodies buried on that tragic day nearly 2,000 years ago. In recent years, there has been an increase in the number of excavations carried out by teams of archaeologists and scientists. Various artefacts have been recovered and casts have been made to preserve the structure of the individuals buried in the ash for future research on their anatomical history, cultural beliefs and general lifestyle of the old city. As further areas of the city were unearthed, people began stealing valuable things from the site to sell at special auctions. In reaction to the theft, officials took action and the government initiated an official excavation campaign in 2017. This program attempted to counteract unlawful and unauthorised activity in the area, such as excavating tunnels to access valuable antiquities worth millions of dollars, particularly in illegal markets. The villas of Civita Giuliana had been subjected to organised looting for many years before the law intervened with the excavation program. Several valuable artefacts, including some vital ones believed to be located in the settlement, have been stolen by robbers. Since the eruption's history, the excavation program has resulted in the uncovering of various remarkable areas of the city. These findings have not only brought priceless knowledge to the attention of the world, but they have also assisted in the discovery of additional interesting facts about the city of Pompeii that can be valuable in Italy's developmental study. One of the most major discoveries uncovered here was the slave room, which was located in the city's outskirts. The room was discovered as part of one of the villas in Civita Giuliana. It contained wooden beds, a chamber pot and a trunk containing fabric and metal things. The slave room, along with other furnishings such as beds and chamber pots, is thought to have housed a modest-sized slave family working for a master who dwelt in their villa. They must have been in charge of the horses in their stables as well as the day-to-day -day operation of the house based on their appearance. Over time, this region has been protected from thieves and other illegals who used to excavate without a permit. The intervention of the proper authorities has aided in the preservation of the riches, human and animal remains throughout the area. Archaeologists discovered culinary utensils and other similar items among the rubble of this room. Gabriel Zaktrigal, the director of Pompeii's archaeological park, praised the discovery he stated that the finding was unusual and different and it came with unexpected opportunities, one of which is the knowledge and realism of the ancient city of Pompeii. Legends and conquerors have always written history, but a fantastic opportunity arose when the scientists discovered the slave room and the horses. It is acknowledged that regular men's deeds may not make it into the history books, but with the slave room discovery, no one will be left in the dark about how the average residents of Pompeii were part of Pompeii's history. Zagtrigal couldn't hide his delight at the discovery of this room, which he felt was more valuable than whatever riches they might have unearthed there through time. The unusual preservation of the human experience here by the volcano is priceless, especially because it gives a window into ancient society's vulnerable individuals. A year before the slave room discovery, Archaeologists uncovered the bones of an enslaved person and his master within one of the villas in a place thought to be a corridor while excavating the vicinity of the Civita Giuliana Villa. The victim's corpses were cast and have since been kept safe at the villa until today. Scientists noticed that both males were lying close to each other. They are also thought to have escaped the first stage of the Vesuvius disaster which was the volcano's eruption which blanketed the city in a cloud of dust, ash and rubble. Scientists used radiocarbon dating techniques to estimate the ages of the two individuals, which revealed that one was between the ages of 18 and 25, and the other was between the ages of 30 and 40. The younger guy had compressed vertebrae, indicating that he was probably an enslaved person who did severe manual labour, but the other, viewed as the master, had stronger bones due to the tunic he originally wore over his bones. In August 2017, the hair and bones of a partially mummified slave who was freed and rose through the ranks of society were unearthed. They were discovered in the Positano Cemetery in a tomb near the main gates to the city of Pompeii. 
Nevertheless, this tomb is thought to have been prior to the volcanic destruction of the city, but it was still an exciting discovery. A man's mutilated remains were discovered at Herculaneum on the way out of town. Archaeologists think he died when stepping out of the water, most likely to seek assistance. While the slave room was eye-opening, another discovery that astounded archaeologists was the Pompeii chariot. For some time now, the discovery of the chariot has shifted the focus of archaeological investigation on Pompeii's ruins. The chariot was discovered in perfect condition owing to the preservation power of the volcanic ash that buried the city and preserved most other goods and structures. Casting has also been used to preserve the corpses of dead horses discovered in a stable. The holes left by the creatures in the coagulated lava were discovered and filled with a liquid plaster that revealed the animal's body structure and size. Adult horses were easily identified as a result of the casting, and other animals such as donkeys and pigs were also unearthed beneath the ruins. According to archaeologists, the chariot was built of beech wood and was employed in celebrations or parades. It's the first time anything of its sort has ever been seen in these modern times, and the excellence of the wooden chariot has never been seen any place else in Italy. According to archaeologists, the chariot design was created with a high-level mechanical system. The seats were designed with a metal armrest and a backrest that could fit at least two people. The city of Pompeii evokes a sense of melancholy since we can only picture the morbid visuals that the people of this once great city experienced as they died unexpectedly due to a natural tragedy. But we have embraced what nature has given us and are taking advantage of the opportunity to learn about our ancestors. Let us know what you think in the comments section below.